Fidelity FX Super Resolution, or FSR if you really don't know how acronyms work, is AMD's image upscaling tech that looks set to disrupt the industry by allowing gamers to obtain the frame rates of playing at a lower resolution without the associated loss of image quality. That is, it will disrupt the industry once it gets support in some games people actually want to play. Well, last month, developers Capcom implemented this new wonder tech in a patch for Resident Evil Village, an actual factual AAA game that could really see a benefit for gamers with lower-end hardware and... Wait, doesn't this game already have a perfectly good upscaler? So yes, once more I, the master of marking, am poking fun at a game unfairly. Yes, RE8 already has a checkerboard rendering mode, called Interlaced, that allows the game to improve performance without a major sacrifice to image quality. However, that mode only has a single setting, that is, ON. FSR, however, has four separate levels of scaling, from ultra quality down to performance, that essentially run the game at lower resolutions, then use upscaling magic to restore the image to the native pixel count. The effect, in theory, is that the game runs at the speed it would run at if it were being played at that lower resolution. The upscaler then restores some of the quality that would otherwise have been lost. And I'll look a little more in depth at the image quality aspect later on, but as the performance impact is a bit more quantifiable, I thought I'd start there. I should point out I ran my tests in a cutscene about 40 minutes into the game, so beware some minor spoilers. My test platform today is the lowest end modern setup I have at the moment, the Ryzen 3 4350G with integrated Vega 6 graphics, overclocked to 4.2 and 2.25 GHz respectively, and 16GB of dodgy as hell DDR4 4000 tuned to CL17. Thanks to the overclock and the fast RAM, native rendering is actually surprisingly palatable on the 4350G, averaging 34.5 FPS. However, 1% lows dip way into the 20s, and this kind of thing causes severe slowdown in Resident Evil 8. When this happens during cutscenes, it's possible for audio and animation to become desynchronized, and slow motion gameplay can feel like playing with a layer of syrup over your mouse mat. Enabling interlaced rendering has been an option for those with lower-end hardware since the game launched, and the scene runs much more smoothly as a result. Averages jump about 30%, up to 45 FPS, and 1% lows reach 37. As well as making the game more playable, this also reduces the risk of messed up cutscenes. I've yet to see a reason why anyone with this particular APU setup couldn't play the entirety of RE Village without performance issues, at least since the DRM thing was fixed. So how does this new FSR technology compare to interlaced rendering? At ultra quality, as it turns out, not that differently actually. Averages are within half a frame and lows within two frames slower than interlaced. Speaking purely in terms of frames per second, on this APU, FSR Ultra doesn't offer anything the game didn't already have. Now, obviously this made me curious, FSR has been touted as a big deal for games, but this result gives the impression that, at least in the one good game it's available in, it wasn't living up to the hype. To be 100% sure, I used a control test, my personal PC, running a Ryzen 5 5600X and RTX 3060 Ti, playing at 1440p using a variation on the graphics priority preset with texture resolution, shadow and mesh quality turned up to high. Rather than testing purely in the same cutscene, I used my usual GPU benchmark run, which is roughly 75% gameplay and 25% cutscenes. The results pretty much bear out the earlier test with the APU. Interlaced rendering, this time offering a 25% benefit over native, with the 5% discrepancy explained in part by hitting a CPU limitation, and the FPS difference between Interlaced and FSR Ultra once more is only within the margin of error. I think it's safe to conclude then that FSR Ultra is of no real performance benefit in Resident Evil 8 over the game's existing upscaling tech. Of course, as I said earlier, FSR isn't just defined by its Ultra setting, there are three more modes to choose from. 
FSR quality, one step down from Ultra in terms of render resolution, gains an extra 7 FPS to both averages and minimums for a 17% boost in performance. Balanced, a further step down and only one notch above the minimum, comes close to offering 60 FPS average, gaining 10% over quality mode. Finally, FSR Performance uses the lowest resolution base image and as a result it manages an impressive 65 FPS with lows of 56, an increase of over 12% over balanced and 90% overall. There's no such thing as a free lunch and this extra performance from the various scaling options doesn't come without compromise. As you might expect, the greater the benefit in a frame rate, the more image quality is sacrificed. To get the best quality captures within the limits of my current gear, all the following footage was captured from my personal rig running at the same settings as the 4350G, though obviously with much higher frame rates. Still, it might be hard to see differences on screen, what with compression and all, so I'll do my best to describe the differences. On this close-up, it's possible to see where the interlaced rendering method has sort of pixelated the original image a bit, resulting in lower overall detail in the hair and pores on the face. There's a minor loss in sharpness as a result, though this is the sort of thing you'll really only see if you're pixel peeping at a relatively static subject. FSR Ultra trades in the pixelation of interlaced mode for a sort of general softness when compared to native res. In motion this might not be noticeable depending on your own standards of image quality. On the positive side, FSR Ultra exhibits none of the weird banding in the fire effects that I noticed in interlaced mode while editing this video. Looking at this outdoor scene from normal gameplay, the difference is a bit more stark. Interlaced makes alias lines more noticeable and destroys some distant detail whereas FSR Ultra softens the alias lines and with it takes away even more detail. The difference here is much more noticeable even without zooming in, especially given the number of tree branches in this particular scene. Overall, FSR Ultra brings no benefit to performance and creates arguably equal image quality to interlaced rendering. In other titles, this may not hold true, especially if they lack an equivalent tech to interlaced rendering, but as it stands, there isn't a whole lot to recommend the use of FSR Ultra in this title. So, how about the other modes? Well, if your PC hardware is less capable than what I'm testing here, chances are you were ready to low-spec gamer the shit out of the game to make it playable anyway, but for science, let's look at how much FSR affects image quality at lower settings. Dropping from Ultra to Quality, which as a reminder gives an extra 17% performance, actually has a relatively minimal effect on image quality in the cutscene. Jaggies are perhaps a tiny bit more um, jaggy than they were, but overall softness appears, at least to my eye, about the same. The JPEG style artifacting is a bit more pronounced in hair and other previously high detail areas, but the reality of it is, in motion, most of this is academic. If you were already willing to take the quality hit from Ultra, you'll probably be satisfied with a hit from Quality too. Stepping down to Balanced is where I don't have to zoom in to see a difference anymore. The added softness is apparent without straining my eyes to see it, and when I actually do zoom in, I can see how FSR Balanced has effectively had the same effect on detail as a light Gaussian blur filter. To gain the extra 10% performance boost over quality, a lot of detail has to be sacrificed to Mother Miranda. Given the drop off in quality from Balanced then, I can already guess what performance mode will look like, and to give you an idea of what I think is happening, let me show you something. If we take a square in Photoshop and blur it out, then sharpen the hell out of it, it's no longer a square, it has these rounded edges now. If you do that to pixels on a large enough scale, you get what we see here in FSR Performance, where fine details take on a sort of rounded, blobby appearance. This is in fact bad enough that I started to wonder, what actually are we gaining above just running the game at the render resolution? FSR Performance halves the resolution on each axis, meaning that if your output is 1920x1080, it's upscaling from 960x540. 
So I dropped the render resolution to 0.5 in the settings menu where it's listed under the rather vague name of image quality and captured the cutscene again. And, well, is this actually any worse than FSR performance? It's grainier, sure, but that graininess is present in the original 1080 image and is probably some side effect of low resolution shadows or temporal AA or something, and it's only absent from the FSR image because it got blurred out. Zoomed in, I can see a difference, but I can't put my hand on my heart and say it's better. I can't argue that FSR is doing nothing to the image here, but this still makes the whole Fidelity FX super resolution thing feel kind of like snake oil. So, I was going to end the video with some sort of even-handed compromise that represents both those who prefer quality and those who prefer frame rate, and you probably know who you are and don't need my help to decide that. The point I think I've accidentally arrived at is that, well, at least in this game, FSR Ultra is no better than interlaced rendering, and lower FSR settings are not only of little improvement over playing at lower resolutions without FSR, at the extreme end of things, they might actually be subjectively worse. Don't agree with me? Eh, make your own video. Or let me know in the comments. While you're down there, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.